Do you know that you can use that your HND that you have to also get admitted to do a master's degree here or even a PhD? Yeah, it's possible, guys. Hello, guys, and welcome back to Ekman TV. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to um, apply for fully funded scholarship in Australia to do your master's or to do your PhD, and uh, I'm going to be showing you how to go how to um, apply to universities that don't. Uh, require application fee you know because some universities actually require the application fee but i'll be showing you some universities that don't require application fee i've applied to some of those universities in the past so it's going to be based on my uh, past experiences and uh, also another sweet thing that you're going to learn is that do you know that you can use that your hnd that you have to also get admitted to do a master's degree here or even a phd yeah it's possible guys so if you want to learn these secrets just sit back and enjoy welcome back to the channel guys i can categorically tell you guys that um, studying or doing a phd with without a scholarship is actually a little bit difficult because of um the fees it's very very difficult for you to maybe try to pay the fees and stuff like that so the best way to do a phd is just to have a scholarship just to have that scholarship because if you have the scholarship at least you know your mind is at rest that you don't have to bother about the fees you know and it's easier for you to navigate to do your research and also to explore other opportunities but if you are just here you are you are paying the fees you have to be working very hard to get those fees and most times the, the work you do may not even be able to give you that money at that time because you also have to do your research so it's, it can be very difficult it can be very difficult to combine the two because of course you can't work full hours you know once you're on a student visa you can't work full hours you have limited time to work so that is why it may be difficult to raise the money but it, i'm not saying it's impossible i'm just it's just like an assumption i'm not working but i think it may be difficult but the main thing is that it's easier for you to have a scholarship you know so and the thing is that these things are there these opportunities are there whenever i go online i see these opportunities i'm like oh my god i wish i can be able to share all these things so that's why i'm trying to make this particular video now now the first thing i want to talk about is um when you are trying to apply maybe from nigeria or any other country you are in you see that most universities have this application fee why they put this application fee is so that they can be able to should i say streamline the number of applications they get because most times these universities they get a lot of applications you see people apply you can see up to like uh, maybe i'm just quoting this figure maybe you can see like let's say 200 000 applications whereas the, the spaces they need maybe let's say like 2000 and they can have up to 200 000 that's without an application fee but once they cap that application fee you see a lot of people won't want to apply again you understand so with that they can have lower number of applicants and then it's easier for them to make the selection you understand so that is why we have most universities especially in europe they have these applications for even in the us and even in australia here so it, it doesn't mean that there are no universities that don't have an application fee so if you are working on a budget let's say you don't really have a lot of money so you, you don't want to come and start experimenting maybe let me play, pay this application fee now let me see so if you if you are on a budget <laughs> then you should look out for universities that don't require application fee like when i was applying i was on that kind of budget like if i look at the university and i see application fee run if i check see application fee run maybe i would have got the scholarship since but because i was running i ran past my scholarships you understand but <laughs> the point i'm just trying to make is that those application fees are there like uh, it, it's possible for you to look out for universities that don't have application fee and it also makes it like when you apply and maybe you don't get admitted you don't feel bad because it's possible that after paying the application fee you apply and you don't, you don't get anything and then that money will go like that but that's all the point so in this in this um video i will also show you guys some universities that i've applied to in the past that didn't need the application fee in australia here so the first one i want to talk about is the university of southern queensland and that's the university i'll be using to do this uh, video to show you guys how to do this application whether you have your bsc or hnd or whatever you have for you to apply now the second university i want to talk about is university of um new south wales yeah you also don't need an application fee and then 
third one is the Charles Darwin University. You also don't need an application fee. And another good thing with these three universities I just mentioned is that these universities, you, 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 they don't need you to go through an agent to apply. You can just apply straight from the from your country wherever and it's free like you just apply to the university free so that is also another good stuff like i i i, I really like about the universities unlike the university i am in now griffith university even though they don't have an application fee but you can't apply directly you have to go through an agent as long as you're coming from nigeria but this is not the case for university of southern queensland university of new south Wales, and Charles down university that was the third university i wanted to mention Charles Darwin University, it's in Darwin. It's also a very cool school. Yeah. So um it's I think it's very uh, important for you to be able to find out these universities that you can actually apply to that they don't uh, require application fee and they don't need you to go through an agent because it makes it easier for you if you don't get accepted. You just you know move on because when you come and start investing that little little money even though it may be little here but when you convert it to the local currency it's always a little you know on the high side so you may not want to take that risk so if you if you have the money to take the risk please do because schools that require application fee there is a higher chance of you getting into those kinds of schools because the school gets a, a, a lower number of total applications because a lot of people won't pay the application fee you understand the point i'm making the analogy I'm trying to make is that let's say a, a university A pays application uh, has application fee. University B doesn't have application fee. University A can have only let's say hundred applications, whereas they want to pick like eighty people. So you see, they are only dump twenty people. But University B, because they don't need application application fee, like five thousand people can apply, and they still need eighty people. So they are going to lose like uh, four thousand two hundred people, uh, four thousand whatever people like that. You know. So um, with that kind of number, you will see that if you are applying for University B that don't need the application fee, there is lower chance that you get admitted. But if you are applying for University A, there is a higher chance you get admitted. So that's just the application fee. So I'm not saying that you should just look out for those without the application fee. The point I'm trying to make is that there are universities without application fee and it's safer for you if you are on a budget, like if you don't really have the money so that if you don't get the admission, you don't feel bad. That's just the point I'm trying to make. But if you have the money, please go for the application fee. It's cool. So now let's get right into this video. Let's let me uh, share my screen so that I'll show you guys how to apply to University of Southern Queensland. That's going to be the case study for this video. Yeah. So guys, um, I'm going to be showing you this. Now this is my homepage, google.com. So um. I said I'm going to be using University of Southern Queensland as an example. So let's just type in University of Southern Queensland here, which I've already done. That's why it's here. So we have University of Southern Queensland. So that's very good. So now we click on this unisq.edu.au. So another thing I want to show you guys is that you can actually go to the website of any uh, university in Australia. Like if I want to type, let's say, University of um, New South Wales. Once I just type University of New South Wales, then you're going to see this um, usc.edu.au. That is what the official website is. So you don't need to maybe come and start looking, uh, stressing yourself. Once you just type the stuff on Google, you just look for the one that ends with maybe .edu.au and you see the way it is. This is their official website. So whatever information you see here is what is required, maybe for fees or whatever. So let's go back to what we are doing. University of um, Southern Queensland. Okay. So now we we'll go to, you see here, unisq.edu.au. So when I click on that, it's going to bring me to their homepage. So in this homepage, I'll scroll down, scroll down. Let's say I'm, I want to apply, I'm maybe looking at the uh, opportunities these are the degrees they have here agriculture and environment as and humanities aviation and stuff like that so let's say i'm in the sciences so let me click on sciences i click on sciences so it brings me to this place this is the overview of what they offer here so you can read that on your own time um so let's just look for okay here this is the undergraduates now we have the postgraduate here so um one thing with the undergraduate is that 
uh, the opportunities for undergraduates is really limited, especially for international students. So most times the universities use these undergraduates to make money. So um, or, or most times the universities use these undergraduates kind of like is the is the basic. So I don't think they have a lot of opportunities or I mean funding for these undergraduates. So that is why most of the funding is in this postgraduate is why it's good for you to maybe have your bachelor's first in your home country you know before uh trying to do this so now um we are in the postgraduate area now so these are the courses for sciences we have our greek astronomy biology chemistry climate food and wine science wow i like something like this food and wine let's use food and wine science because of the wine so i click on food and wine sciences degrees so it's showing some stuff here so we just go down very good now we see undergraduates there are if you want to go for this you're gonna see you can do the first one bachelor of arts and uh, uh, bachelor of arts and bachelor of science the second one bachelor of business and bachelor of science is still under the food and wine science degree so these are the uh uh, things available for this undergraduate so let's go for the postgraduate since that's where we are interested in so we have the first one to be graduate certificate of science the wine science and then the masters of science now the research is for those people who want to do go for the phd so we have the doctor a phd and then the master of research so let me use the the phd as an example so let's just click on the phd but you can click on any other thing masters or whatever it is that you want to do so now you're going to see the requirements the entry requirements study mode campus duration is three years of part uh, or part-time equivalent which is always maybe double of the three years so these are the overview uh, career outcomes uh -huh, the entry requirements so it's very very good for you to read this now look at this applicants must have one of the following an australian university bachelor's degree with first class honors or second class honors if i just know that you don't have this one if you are not in australia because they said australian university bachelor's degree now you see here or that is a very important statement or the second one is an australian university's master's degree with the thesis you also know that you may not have this one unless you already have a master's degree in australia and then you can use it down say or other qualifications and or experiences equivalent to what first class or second class honors division a now that is, this is the clause that is why it's possible for you to do a phd without having a master's because of this or you see the first one or second one or so if you have a bsc from nigeria and you have a very good cgpa then this third one applies to you because your qualification can be uh, said to be to uh, align with this third point here other qualifications and or experiences equivalent to first class or second class honors so that is why i advise people if you want to apply for phd straight without going through a master's please have a very good result have a very good 4.4.1 4.2 4.3 4.4 4.5 4 first class like make very mad result because that's one thing that will really help to distinguish you you know so if you also have a hnd this also applies to you but you may not have to go to the phd you may you, you can just apply to masters but this is just how it is for the masters too okay so let's just go to the masters to be sure let me go back okay back okay we have postgraduate two here masters very good now let's go to the entry requirements good three-year bachelor degree from an Australian university or equivalent now or okay look they say three-year bachelor degree from an Australian university or equivalent so now this or equivalent means bachelor degree from any other university in the world that can be compared to the bachelor degree in Australia so that your HND that you have uh, even though it's not a bachelor degree but it is an equivalent kind of degree because it can be compared to the Australian uh, uh, every kind of degree can actually be compared to the Australian bachelor's degree but then the, the, the thing is what is now going to be the point because I think they have what they call the Australian framework like you know they have they calculate their CGP on a seven point scale we calculate our CGP in Nigeria on a five point scale so when you bring 
when you give them your transcript, they are going to convert your CGPA to a seven point scale. So the same thing happens. If you give them your HNT, they are also going to convert it to a seven point scale. So if it meets the requirements for a bachelor's degree in Australia, then boom, you are in. It doesn't matter. You have a HND or whatever. It doesn't matter. Now look at another thing here. They said, or oh, equivalent professional work experience as determined through the credit and exemption procedure. So even if you don't have a bachelor's degree <laughs> and you have an equivalent professional work experience, mm, it's possible for you to do a master's. Like, let me. This means you don't have a bachelor's degree. You don't have a HND. But you have professional work experience, you can get into a master's degree. Guys, these are opportunities are here. But because people don't like reading this kind of thing, they don't like trying. That's why you don't get it. So this is something that you can actually try, you know. So what else is the English language requirements? Yes, I also tell people that Nigeria is an English speaking country. So like me, I didn't have to write this test. So what I did was that I just went to my university. I asked them to give me uh, a letter showing that I studied in English and they gave that to me. So this, it just covered this. I didn't have to write any of these tests, you know. So, and with that, you, go, you just go to apply. But before we apply, let's look for scholarship because that's the main cocoa. That's the main thing we are looking for. Uh -huh. So, they said here, your actual fees may vary depending on the courses you select. That's true. You know, we selected food and wine, Abby. So maybe that's why it's high. Maybe if you select something else, it may be low. <laughs> I'm just joking. But the, the thing is that the, 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 the fees vary based on the courses you select. Yeah. So um, let's see scholarships. At this university, there are some scholarships that can help you to um, uh, complete your studies. So how to apply. So you just click on this, apply directly to university of southern queensland so let me go back to the this uh, research to doctor of philosophy fees and scholarships good you also see this uh, there is information here that i wanted you guys to see now see grant to help you pay your fees all australian citizens permanent resident and new zealand citizens commencing a higher degree research we have the addition fees paid by the Australian Commonwealth Government under the Research Training Program Fee Offset Scheme. So, you see how this country is like, if you are here and you want to do your PhD, you can just apply and get the funds. Like, once you're a citizen, like you're a citizen here, or a permanent resident, so you don't even need to bother about scholarship. But if you don't have scholarship, uh, uh, if you don't, you don't need to have to bother about fees. Sorry, but if you are not a, a, a citizen or a resident, that is where you have to pay the fees. So you can read all this up. Now, students eligible for an RTP are those who have not used RTP fee offset funding in the previous three years, or have already used this funding and have successfully completed HDR degree. Once a student completes an HDR degree, full entitlements of RTP fees are restored. So if you use this RTP to do your master's, you can also use it to do your PhD. That's what it means. Like, but if you do it and stop halfway, you can't use it again. Now, applying for this. Look at this. Intended students are advised to allow several months for discussion with potential supervisors and for consideration of the application prior to the commencement of the program. So if you are trying to apply for maybe PhD or whatever, Masters by Research, it's good for you to browse like this website now. You go and look for the staff members, like everybody is here. You just look for the staff members and then you are going to get their emails and send them emails. I'm not going to be going to the staff page now, but you can find that on your own. I can do that in a later video so that I won't digress too much. Now, um, let's go to the application. I want to take you guys to applying for these scholarships. Okay. Apply directly to University of Southern Queensland. Okay, sorry, not here. Mm, Feed and scholarships. Um, okay, good. You now click on this blue link. Find a scholarship that works for you. Find a scholarship that works for you. Good. So these are some scholarships that are available. Chancellor Excellence Scholarship, Vice Chancellor Excellence Scholarship, University of Solar Queensland Academic Scholarship. But these scholarships are like small, small money and it's for bachelor's degree people. So it may not cover everything you need. So if you want to look for the scholarship that you really need, you go here, Future Students. When you click on Future Students, uh -huh, you are now going to see the main 
postcode code now domestic hr student scholarship these are for people who are like already in australia or who are permanent residents or who are citizens ahead they're the ones who are going to get this particular scholarship now is they also have domestic PhD stipend scholarship. Now, international PhD fee scholarship. This is the one. If you are not in Australia, this is the one you need. And this closing date is thirty first May. So, guys, you know how many days you have to do this? Just apply, I beg. Thirty first May for international PhD fee scholarship. And then you you don't apply for only one. No, please apply for two of them because this first one will pay your school fees. This second one will pay your stipends. Like you need the money now. So let's see how much they will be paying you if you get the scholarship. Wow, stipend of that's three thousand dollars per annum so you have to divide it into 12 to know how much they will pay you monthly and then you, you still divide it into two because they will they will divide they, they used to pay every fortnight like they paid every two two weeks so this is the money you'll be earning just, that just for your stipend so the eligibility here you see to be eligible must have completed a bachelor's degree with first class honors or equivalent level that is why i like or equivalent level be eligible to be enrolled full time, so you must have to come full time. Must have applied for enrollment or currently enrolled in PhD. Uh -huh. Be an international student. Uh, you must not be an Australian citizen. If you are an Australian citizen, you go for the domestic one. Not have previously had an Australian government funded higher degree by research. So once you look at this thing, you just see you are qualified. Oh yeah, how to apply? Just click on this. And look at the things you need. Just get your CV. Click on this link. You download this document and you fill it. Get your transcript. If you've done any publication, write it down. That's all. That's all. You apply this thing. Every time people will say, you want to go through agent, go through agent. Go through which agent. Look at what you just have to do. See this thing here. You don't need any agent. So you just uh, uh, make your application. You understand? So that is just so. So application must be made via this University of Sunday uh scholarship application. So when you cl click this, it's going to, I think it should prompt you to open your account. Uh -huh. You have to register, open your account, and then you got just can apply. You're not paying any fees. You're not, you have nothing to lose. Just apply. Apply. Bikono. Eh? Okay. Yes. So that is um, that. So the closing date is that first May. So guys, those who are interested should hurry. And um, I'll also be sharing other um, opportunities that I see maybe on my Instagram or maybe... Uh, or in subsequent videos you know so you guys can also apply and try to take advantage of it so now you see you don't need your you uh, what i'm trying to say is that even if you don't have a bachelor's you don't have a, a, a hnd see it's possible for you to apply for a master's degree here as long as you just have a professional certificate that can prove let, let me go back to that thing again so that you guys will see that everything is not maybe what people have been telling you it's good for you to search for information yourself you know let, 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 let's just go back to that because let it not be as if um, okay let's go back okay very good postgraduates look at it masters of science for agricultural science here look at it here guys you see um entry requirements three years bachelor degree from an australian university or equivalent so if you have your bsc in nigeria this is what it means is as it's equivalent to this three-year bachelor degree because our own is four years now or you see within this all be or equivalent professional work experience as determined through the credit and exemption procedure so if you click this you're going to see credit and exemption procedure so if you have equivalent professional work experience this means you didn't have you don't have bachelor's you don't have hnd you don't have any school degree but you have professional work experience let us click on this credit and exemption procedure so there are a lot of things that's why i don't want to really read it but when you read it you will see um that you don't really even if you don't have your bachelor's or you don't have your uh, hnd you can actually apply for a master's and people are doing it so that's why you have to get up and do it i don't want to come and start reading all these things but please you can read it yourself okay yeah so that is that wow thank you so much guys for watching my video i hope you really enjoyed it and i hope you learned something so please um subscribe to my channel like comment on my video and um i love you i love you guys <laughs> i want to say i love you sorry i love you so see you guys next week bye bye